good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As I'm standing here in front of you, I'm feeling really enthusiastic, really happy to be here, and a bit nervous. And you can probably feel it. But how can you feel it? I mean, there are no mind readers in the audience, right? So how do we do it? How do we humans under understand each other, intentions, feelings, and emotions? The answer lies in the brain, with the discovery of a new class of brain cells called mirror neurons. What are they, and how do they help us understand each other? We all know what mirrors are, those bright, shiny objects that reflect everything we do. And what about neurons? Neurons are nerve cells. They compose our brain, and they're also all over our body. But if I would like to understand the reflecting part, I will have to use a prop, myself. For example, if I would like to raise my left hand, groups of neurons inside my brain, which are in charge of my left hand, will compose and coordinate that action to my hand. Now that's easy, but what if I'll tell you that while my hand was held up high, groups of neurons inside each and every one of your brain, in charge on your private left hand, were working in the same manner. That's pretty amazing, huh? And that's the amazing reflecting finding in the mirror neurons. Apparently, when we see somebody performing an act, and, we are, and when we are doing the same action, then the same brain cells are firing. And how do we know that? Because we caught them in action. Using single cell recording, we were able to find those cells working in the exact same manner. So that's pretty interesting, but what's in it for us? Well, this amazing finding has altered the way we think about ourselves and about our social self. Now we can understand empathy, compassion, and actually understand each other by simply walking into each other's shoes. For example, if I'm smiling, then your brain gets the instant feeling of a smile, and you don't have to put any effort and understand my intention. Maybe that's why when we see somebody in pain, we are doing the altruistic movement of trying to stop that pain because we actually feel that pain. We could also use that knowledge, and scientists actually do, to understand social disturbances. For example, autism or schizophrenia, syndromes in which people suffer from, from them, find it really hard to understand another person. So now you know that we can actually get into, into each other's minds without a sixth sense. And I would like to thank you for listening to me, because your brain works just as hard as mine. <laughs> Fabulous, and what a brilliant beginning. And